Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode beta 66 for Friday, the 29th of January 2016. I'm back to lying about my date again. This is the show where two lifelong friends talk about geek stuff and whatever else comes to mind. I'm Amos and uh, that, that dude right there that's, that's <laughs> trying to smile because he's dumb. That's Kent. <laughs> What's up, dude? Not much, man. Your, your, your voice sounds better than it did last week, but not by much. Right, right. Well, I did some karaoke last night and actually made it all the way through Vanilla Ice. So, I mean, that, that's like my... Uh, I'm, I'm on the road to recovery for the first time all year. It'll be like mid-February before I actually have my voice. So, right, speaking right. of voices, man, we have a third voice with us today. We do. One each, Mr. What? Alex Hanna, also known as What's Tim Beck in the uh, Diamond Club chat room. Hello. Hello. <laughs> What's going on, guys? You know, just I'm hanging out. Crash your party. Just, just hanging out. Just, right. just <laughs> that's what we do. We're just... Yeah, man, we're 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 glad to have you on. Um, we always like having guests, and especially if we can get people from the Diamond Club and Chat Realm. Awesome. And, oh, absolutely. And you live on Chat Realm, like. It's like a messaging service for you. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I mean, I'm on IRC all day long anyway for various things, so I might as well, right? <laughs> there you go. Right. There you go. So, uh, so there's a little, no, something else special happening today other than just my voice kind of coming back. Kent, what are you drinking? Uh, I am right now. I'm actually drinking a Samuel Adams Holiday Porter, mm. clearing out some of really? the uh, Christmas beers from the fridge. Nice. Nice. And uh, give us a, a one to five on that. Uh, shoot. I'd probably somewhere, somewhere around a four, probably like a high three, probably a pretty, uh, probably pretty close to a four. It's pretty good. Okay, okay. And how about you, Alex? Oh, I uh, I have a Moon Man from New Glarus here. No, called a No Coast Pale Ale. No, that's a good flashback stuff. to fifty episodes ago. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so. Yes, but, uh, Go ahead. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, it actually so, it actually is. Yeah, so yeah, I was gonna say, Amos, you remember having one, right? Um, well, not a, not the uh, actually. What what do you have any again? Moon man. Moon man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I had, did I we had, bring you a moon man, yep. or was it just no, a spotted cow? No, I got I got a spotted cow, a moon man, um, and uh, a couple others. I got there's a there's a six pack sampler little thing, and I think there's like oh okay. Two uh, two spotted cows in there because that's the one that you thought that I would like the most, and I don't know they're all pretty good. Like none of them were overly hoppy right. and and didn't kill my taste buds and make me want to shoot myself in the eyeball. So yeah. that's a that's that's one of my qualifiers. If, if I drink a beer, it doesn't make me shoot myself in the eyeball. <laughs> so yeah, now New Glarus is really good. They're they're about as artisanal as you can get when you come to when it comes to craft. So beer. I decided to go ahead and start drinking a beer today too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought you said beer. No, no, that's that's not that's not that's that's, that's not what I had. Oh. Okay, that's oh that's, there you go. That's, that's, well, that's well, see, I, I thought about this, but then I was gonna go ahead and just upgrade a little bit. Oh, uh, I was gonna say, you know, oh. it's funny. The the first beer I had at Nerdtacular was New Cl- Newcastle Brown Ale. Yeah. Good stuff. Ooh. Ah, there you go. Oh, Palana. <laughs> nice. Ooh, there you go. Excellent. Yeah, in my Palana mug with my Oktoberfest koozie. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> Holy cow. I, I didn't cow. know they All made right. koozies for, for uh, Steins. <laughs> uh, I didn't either. Yeah. I just actually got this as a free gift from Oktoberfest this year. That is nice. pretty sweet. That is a full liter sized mug with a koozie that fits it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is that is fantastic. So, uh, so for Polana, how should I pour this, Kent? Is this like a uh, slow pour? Is it a heavy head? Uh, yeah, you're gonna get a lot of head on the on an Oktoberfest beer. Uh, so pour it, uh, I guess, moderately fast against the side of the glass. Yeah. Depends on what you want, really. Yeah. <laughs> I like head, but it's got to be drinkable head, you know. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Palana's definitely got drinkable head. That's nice. It's got a nice, yeah, it's, there you it's go. a nice that, golden that's, color. That's nice. nice pour. Thank you. <laughs> that's what I do. Almost like you've <laughs> done this before. <laughs> Shh, I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Alcoholics go to meetings. I, I actually, it, surprisingly, like I totally love beer. I enjoy it the hell out of it. This is my second beer today, and my... Third beer this year. 
Okay. <laughs> like, oh so, wow. You're you're failing you know, yourself. <laughs> yeah, just, everybody everybody realizes they're coming on our show and they start drinking. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's good or bad or <laughs> No, I, I actually like I just don't I really don't like drink that often, but when you know, when I do I'll have a couple, you know, but it's just it's funny. It, it, granted it is only one month in, so I just haven't right. had a good weekend. <laughs> you know? There you go. Right, right. right. There's yep. the problem. So yeah, yeah. It's, uh, this is this is pretty light. Um, it's not uh, not overly hoppy. Uh, it's got a, a nice flavor to it. Yeah, Oktoberfest beers tend to be a little sweeter than your. It is. Like, it is sweet. Yeah. Well, it's supposed to be in, uh, um, the 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 harvest time of year stuff. The really really ripe. Uh, um, uh, I can't I can't think of the the grain that that goes in there. Um, the the stuff. I'm blanking. Come on, can't you're the one that failed the uh the, yeah. the failed the beer test last <laughs> the week. Wheat yeah, that, that goes in. Yeah, jeez, sorry. Was... <laughs> you talking about? Are you talking about barley stroke or something? Bar barley malt. Is it? Yeah. Almost every German beer is barley malt, hops, and water, and that's it. Well, yeast. <laughs> Obviously, you're gonna have yeast to ferment it. But... Yeah. Well, I, I actually have um, the guy that's he, he, he does a, a lot of IT stuff for us, um, IT support work for us. He, he does um, his own home brewing and he gave me some of this stuff. It was really good. Um, I, I got to ask him what what he uses for, for his recipes and stuff. But he, he just kind of makes his own stuff up. He'll, he'll pick up a recipe for, you know, oh, here, here's a, a, an IPA. Just like kind of your, your standard run of the mill IPA. And then he'll sit there and play with it and, and you know, come up with something that just. I don't even know what he, he was doing something with, and, I, and I'm not like, I, I'm not a brewer or anything, so I don't understand all the, the stuff he's doing with like, um, he's doing something with like dry hopping and, and like wild yeast or something. I was like, okay, that sounds oh, wow. interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's probably going to be sour because so, most, yeah, most beers brewed with, most brew, yeah, most beers brewed with wild yeast end up being sour. Hmm. Interesting. So it'll be interesting. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he comes up with. Dry hopping sounds yeah. like a it's like a, sounds like a home brewer's porn. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, I mean, to me, I was like, those are words. Certainly. <laughs> <laughs> Together, yeah. well, sure. I, I agree. That is the <laughs> sentence. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, dry yeah, hopping. Right? Is, like, dry hopping is basically adding hops outside of the normal cycle of when you would normally hop a beer. So it it obviously it's gonna make the beer hoppier. So a lot of your hey, baby. imperial IPAs are dry hopped. Hey baby, you wanna hop my uh, beer? Okay, so that makes sense. <laughs> oh man, so Kent, what have you been up to this week, man? Oh God, I, I feel like I'm going back to the old days of this show, where every time you ask me that question, I'm like, oh my God, I've been so busy. Well, that's that's what it feels like, man. Just work, work, work. <laughs> Uh, I like the fact but, that we have old days I, of this show. <laughs> yeah, the old days. Isn't that cool to be able to say that? We've got like over a year worth of material <laughs> That's now. so funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah. But no, I'm, I'm taking a few days off next week. Uh, we are going to California this weekend. It's my girlfriend Stephanie's mom's birthday, and we're all meeting at her brother's house in California. Uh, we're actually leaving, well, oh, I don't know, in a few hours. For the airport, <laughs> and, um, yeah, we're gonna be there till Tuesday. So nice, nice little vacation for me. Where are you going at in California? Palm Springs. Oh, okay. I have, I have, ton, like all my family is out there. If they're not there, I have my grandpa in Florida, and otherwise, you're in, you're in, uh, um, well, or you're my dad on a boat, uh, currently South Carolina. <laughs> but, but otherwise, you're in California. <laughs> we're on a boat. Oh, yeah. oh man. dude. My dad is like my hero for that. He's like, yeah, we're gonna retire and um, go sailing. Like, and I'm gonna I'm be a pirate. <laughs> oh yeah, no, he he sold his house, put his car that he worked hand like toiled on for every free minute for twenty years, parked it in in storage and went sailing. I was like, dude, you, all right, sold his house. Like he doesn't, he has a storage unit. Like that's the only thing he's got on land. Nice. <laughs> I was like, all right, man. That's, that's that's pretty delight. cool, actually. You know. So, so, oh, something else I wanted to point out. Okay. I am wearing a Ritual Misery T-shirt. What? All the viewers can see. What? And to look at the back. <laughs> 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 
Hashtag still in beta. Yeah. These shirts are really awesome. They are super comfortable. No, wh- which, which one is that? Which one is that? This is the uh, is that the premium, premium shirt? I think yeah. So, so you paid yeah, it's like, the one that's like a, a, a couple bucks more. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say you paid a little bit more for the higher quality uh, mm-hmm. uh, cotton. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is, this is a great shirt. And if anyone else would like to have one of these, just go to ritualmisery.com slash swag and you can get your own. So you know the funny thing, um, we've actually been selling like an average of like two shirts a week or something. <laughs> I've been noticing that. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> Uh, hey, maybe it's maybe it's that offer we made for South by. Yeah, if we see be. you in the wild with a ritual misery shirt, you're drinking for free that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I want to see that. You know? Yeah, that's that's on Ken's dime, by the way. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Moneybags over there. I'm, I'm Mr. Child yeah, well, over here. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah we'll see what kind of trouble <laughs> I get myself into. But <laughs> Dr- <laughs> drinking until the uh, until the fun ones it runs out. So, all right, Alex, how about you, man? What have you been up to this week? Um, Much the same story, huh? I've work, been, work, work. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. A lot of work. Uh, I, I actually described it in, in chat the other day as I am finally knee deep in JavaScript as opposed to neck deep. <laughs> so I've, I've freed my hands now. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I've been doing a, a whole lot of JavaScript at work. And uh, outside of that, doing uh, you know, a, lot of, a lot of video gaming. Playing some Hearthstone, I'm I hit rank seven, um, which is hmm. awesome. Still, yeah, still damn. trying hard for Legend. <laughs> I don't think I one ever made it past ten. Maybe not. Maybe I dipped into nine at one point. I don't think I've ever played a ranked game. Oh really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that's, that's where it's at. I, I just keep redoing the <laughs> tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> that's about where my wife's at. I would. Like a friend, a friend came over, and I was gonna have him play Hearthstone. I was like, "Oh, here, let's let's just make you a deck real quick, dude." She hadn't because I obviously he can't play on my account because I wanted to play against him, mm-hmm. so he was gonna use my wife's account, and she she hasn't even like gotten to level ten with any of her characters. I was like, "Damn it!" <laughs> awesome. Uh, it was terrible. <laughs> that, so, have, have you guys ever played Pokemon? Um, no, never ever. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay. I played. A game of Pokemon, no shit, in cards. The card game Pokemon. Right, that's what. That's actually what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the actual card game. Yeah, yeah, I played it one time. Mm-hmm. I sold it, but I didn't play it. <laughs> he's, he's a Pokemon crack dealer over here. <laughs> I know, right? No, I, so, I actually, in high school, I worked at a toy shop, so we sold all that shit. Oh, okay. <laughs> Cool. Well, Pokemon's actually kind of fun. I mean, if you enjoy Hearthstone or, or or Magic the Gathering or any kind of card game like that, Pokemon's yeah, actually kind of fun. Simple. I mean, it's a, it's a little simpler, perhaps, but it's still, I mean, it's the same concept. And it's pretty fun. Well, I learned to play when my boys were younger. They wanted they wanted the car, you know, they were interested in the cartoons and the, the games and, and oh, yeah. stuff. So I was like, all right, you know, this will be something cool that, that we can do together. So we we got cards and learned how to play it so i used to play a lot with them and i i put together a deck that i thought was was pretty beast well anyway this was years and years and years ago and it, you know every couple of months or whatever we'll we'll break out the cards and play a game here and sure. there but it's not not really a thing anymore well we bought my girlfriend and i bought a new uh well, like if it was magic the gathering they would call it a, a dual deck i don't i don't remember what pokemon calls it but it's basically two decks that are meant to be like played against each other oh, right evenly balanced yeah they're and... not complementary but right yeah they yeah. have counters to each other yeah well they're supposed to this one was kind of a, a, a fail <laughs> Little shit. build but that's beside the point pokemon shit show. The, <laughs> yeah so so stephanie and i got these cards out and played a couple of nights ago and her deck completely destroyed my deck like i couldn't even get enough energy out to play any damn cards so it was a it no, was a total it, fail. So I was like, hold Pokemon, on. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. No, 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 no go oh, ahead. I was go just going to ask, is, is energy like lands and mana in, in, yes. in uh, magic? Okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, same concept. Continue. Same concept. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> uh, so I was like, okay, you know what? Screw this. I got my ass beat so bad. I'm going to go get my beast deck. When I say beast, <laughs> I don't mean beast like, like in um, Hearthstone. I mean like just You're right. a badass. My my fucking beast badass deck, and I'm gonna whoop her ass. No, no, I got my ass kicked again 
because the new they keep I guess they keep upgrading the like the power levels of these cards or whatever because the basic cards oh right a, in a, a lot of the basic cards are more powerful than some of my stage two cards which is like the that's like the highest evolution well unless you count like you know ex or whatever um, yeah that's that's called power creep it's a very real thing yes. in game in, in card games and it's yeah. arguably a good thing so i mean it just depends right. it just means that you're you're maturing the 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 meta of the game, really. Right. Yeah. Exactly. It, it keeps people coming back for more and more and more because it, if you can beast with your old decks, one, well, then why are you going to buy new ones? I don't know. It was, it was an interesting observation because I didn't I didn't continue to buy new cards over the years. It was like I had this old deck that was awesome, and then years later I buy new cards that are yeah. Yeah. See, That's a real I, talk right now in Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. Is you know what do you do for new players coming in and and Hearthstone's what a year and a half into into existence like yeah about. they've got two expansions and three solo missions which are or solo whatever you want to call them Ad uh, adventures sort or of whatever. expansions yeah solo mm -hmm. adventures I guess they're they're called um, which which are arguably honest if if you're gonna buy anything in that game buy the solos because you're guaranteed cards and they're hella fun. Like they're just so much fun, especially this last one where you're like racing mine carts and shit. That was, it was awesome. I don't know. Have you played? <laughs> I, have you done this? The the most recent uh, expansion in Hearthstone, the, the League of Explorers. I haven't. Uh, my son actually, Movie Man Lucas in the chat. He he oh, plays cool. a lot of that stuff, and um, a lot oh, of times right. he'll he'll show me. He'll be like, "Oh, Dad, Dad, check this out." <laughs> but but he won't come on yeah, the show to talk about it. Oh, I was gonna say there's a whole bunch of, of really imaginative things that they that they did with with the solo adventures because I mean obviously they're not things that you can do with ranked play where people are really competing at that level um, just because it's uh, they're ridiculous but that but that's that's the fun part right is because you're mm -hmm. you're trying to get through this you you, you basically you're, you're in one of them your goal is to survive ten turns in this temple and and parts of the parts of the thing are are like. Um, this the sixth turn the the roof collapses and demolishes everything on the board and you know like there there's things that you can do where you can like skip traps and or maybe the trap gets you and it's just it's all sorts of really really imaginative fun stuff that they did with and like that's the kind of stuff that 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 drew me into magic in the first place is is like the competitive like oh I can craft this deck that does this and this to get a you know to do and then and then the thing that really like kind of because I, I, I fell off magic because I just kind of got bored with it. And the thing that really has captured and, and kept my attention with, with Hearthstone is just the, even in the short amount of time and the few cards that they have, especially compared to magic, the stuff that you can do with it has started to get really broad and really interesting and competitive while still being interesting. So, one, one, I, one I don't know things, if you ever watched any Hearthstone tournaments. But. One of the things that gets me is Magic tried to make the transition to digital back in the late 90s, and it just never quite translated still right. Yeah, and it, it, here it is, you know, 15 years, years later, and they're still not, it's still not happening. Um, Hearthstone started out digital. So a lot of the things that you don't want to give players because, you know, the, the complex maths of it or, you know, the, the uh, extreme game mechanics, things like that, you can naturally take care of automatically in a digital world, whereas they wouldn't translate to a physical game because then you've got to, okay, well, do this and do this and do this, and now this game slows down while everybody's breaking out the, the abacus trying to figure out exactly how, yeah. <laughs> how to process this card. So it's, it's almost completely different worlds in that aspect of it, and I think that's one of the things that, really, that I like about Hearthstone better than Magic is, yeah, they're still thinking to do it, but it's a different kind. I'm not worried about, okay, well, now i got to shuffle my deck and put it down the right way, otherwise my competitor is going to get all pissed off because, you know, I'm looking at my card. It didn't, none of that, you know, it's it's all just, it's just right. make it happen. Plus, with only, a, with a max of 30 cards, I mean, there's only so much, yeah, I mean, well, you have to do something quick, you know. Well, Magic was 60, so, and and to be, to to compare them, I feel like Magic games, Probably lasted about twice as long as, as Hearthstone games do. So I, I feel like it's just a, simply a, a kind of a yeah. size matter at that point of like, oh, they wanted a longer game, so you get 60 cards. How, Plus, how, many times were actually, you, how many times were you playing a game of Magic and thinking, that's the fifth time that card's come out? 
Right, but the problem with magic too, half your deck is lands. Mm -hmm. But I shouldn't say half because that's wrong. It really should be around a third to a quarter, depending on what you're running. Right. But you know what I'm saying? Yep. It's it lands are, are what screw you there. Yeah, but and whereas in, in Hearthstone, like you can just you can cut that fifteen cards right out of your deck because it's it's just given to you as the thing goes. Yep. Which is another really interesting mechanic that twists the game from 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 the way magic is, in that yeah, in magic you kind of like you build up fairly regularly your lands, but you can put down like if I draw four lands, like you know, here's four lands, right. you know. Yep. So yeah, you you can't get mana screwed in Hearthstone. Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> well, not 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 really. Not, not without it being unless a, you're playing against a druid. Yeah. Not <laughs> well, not, not unless it's a okay. you know it's an actual game mechanic. It's something that that goes along you know. Yeah. So, Interfate yeah. is cheating. Yeah, you're, 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 you're not you're not sitting there for three turns with one land going. Um, <laughs> exactly. So. Hey, although, I mean, if you want to take devil's advocate there, if you're sitting there for three turns with one land, you build your deck wrong. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sometimes sometimes the math is just not with you. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> oh yeah, no, I I totally agree. And Hearthstone has exactly that with it too. Yep. I have drawn the best and the worst ever curves. <laughs> you know, like I I've drawn that perfect pal secret paladin curve of you know your mini bot on two, muster for battle on three, Aldor on one of your muster for battles on four. <laughs> you know, uh, Lotheb on five, mysterious challenger on six boom on seven <laughs> you know like it's just it's just gross you know mm -hmm. and and then and then i've also drawn like everything just wrong i've drawn i i have literally drawn my first six cards of secrets playing secret Paladin. oh my god <laughs> wow it, what's your what's your favorite class to play um class in general i think hunter because i kind of started there and I tend to to like like the the beast interaction. It's, it's interesting, and there's something there that I haven't quite tapped yet. But I've been playing with this kind of. It, it's actually an old idea when back when Undertaker was a thing. But uh, this like death rattle beast trap druid. It, it, I haven't gotten it working quite yet, but it's it's interesting. So, mm -hmm. um, but but my most fun deck to play is definitely a paladin deck. The, the Murloc paladin is is ah uh, so yeah. fun. <laughs> like, I, I, don't know if, yeah. See, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but I, I still it's, it's I, I think it's funny that Kent knows the Murloc sound, but he's never actually played World of Warcraft. Right. <laughs> yeah. I haven't either. Oh my no, God. I, I take that back. I have like a level 14 or something in the starter edition. Mm. I played it for a little bit. I'm, it's not really my thing. It's it's too slow. Right. Uh, like Diablo is my speed. I've got I've got um, several for, for several hundred uh, hours in, in World of Warcraft. And days played in, in EverQuest before that. So, oh, well, I, if you're talking that kind of time on on a game, that's City Builders for me. Uh, I put about a thousand hours into SimCity Four, probably double that into SimCity Five, and I'm not even sure yet into City Skylines. Like, I know the the numbers are are. <laughs> bad <laughs> a oh lot of God. time because it doesn't even count like time building maps like because i i built like my like this this one i've been working on for a little bit i built my own map and i've been like doing this whole thing it's, it's gonna be neat when it's done but it's uh, yeah it's a lot of work a lot of <laughs> a lot of a lot of ocd with that one if, if you ever <laughs> If you ever get frustrated watching people play video games, don't watch me play City Skylines <laughs> because I will delete and replace the same on ramp fifty times until I get it where I want it. <laughs> so. Oh my gosh! No way. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, and uh, we had some uh, some Doctor Who stuff going on this weekend, Kent. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. Are you guys Whovians or like do you guys oh, yeah. watch Doctor Who or? Yeah, no, okay. I'm, in, well, I'm I, in the Scott Johnson camp of I don't have anything against it. I just I've never made time for it. And it seems yeah, right. It See, seems really daunting was, getting into it now after exactly all that these was years. Me. So ever you know. forever and ever. Like when I was a kid, I caught an episode kind of, you know, here and there, mm -hmm. you know, the like the the version with the, the guy with the scarf. And I remember canine uh, Baker. Yeah. 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 So like uh, just two or three episodes here and there is all I had seen. And then when I became a grown up, I decided that, you know, Doctor Who's kind of a thing and I might want to check it out. So I found like 
the early, 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 early episodes, like the first episodes. Oh, you started with the, the original and, set. Okay. Right. I only got like two episodes in, two or three episodes in. And then I just, I was like, oh my God, there's like 27 seasons of this or some shit. I was like, I, I can't, I can't, I just, I just can't do it. So I put it down. <clears throat> Does and, it suffer from Star Trek TOS syndrome? D well, describe that. Because <laughs> I don't know what that is. Being made in the 60s and 70s with actors that seem to have something to prove? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's good stories and everything. I mean, obviously you can tell that the quality is, is poor just because of the, uh, well, right. first of all, it's in black and white. And second, it's the, the film itself has degraded. So it's kind of hard to watch, I guess. But the, but the acting's no, fine. See. The stories are good. Um, but anyway, so I couldn't do that. Well, my girlfriend started watching Doctor Who several months ago on Netflix, like constantly. Like she, she started on the, I guess, the current series. 2005 one. So, yeah, right. Yeah, it starts right, with Christopher right. Eccleston. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. For one season of him. And then, um, yeah. So anyway, so she started watching that and like every day was watching it, watching it, watching it, which pretty much. That's what we meant did. That, yeah, it pretty much meant that I was watching it too. Even if I was just, you know, passing through the room or whatever, I just, I, I couldn't help it. Doctor Who is just kind of ever present in my house. Hey, for like I catch New Girl once in a while and, too. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that show is actually pretty funny. I've seen, I've seen, I, a, I think, a season of that. It's not my um, particular brand of comedy. That, so it's like, it's not something that I would watch regularly. But yeah, I'll, I'll catch an episode. That's a, well. it, that's, it definitely has its points. That's my Grey's Anatomy <laughs> or any other Shonda Rhimes show. Because my wife and my sister in law are just constantly watching them. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, and, and, see, I watch Zoe Deschanel. <laughs> <laughs> no, just that was thank you. <laughs> so, so. Anyway, so, so, uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago, or no, 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 earlier this week. It was earlier this week because it's my, it's part of my geeky thing of the week. Uh, I was watching an episode, like, I actually sat down to watch an episode with my girlfriend. And I came to the realization that I really like Doctor Who. Like, I really like oh, it. Because yeah. before it was like, that's eh, on. I could take it or leave it or whatever. Don't care. Like, sometimes it's really corny and it's like, ah. Eh, eh, it's a mind yeah. space. It's its own mind space. You have to right. just, it's not yeah. your reality. It's that reality. Exactly. <laughs> you know? Yes. Yes. But now I'm like, okay. All right. I'm in. I'm in. I, 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 I got it. I like it. It's good. Mm. Yeah, it's just, it's just, I, I don't know. I don't, that, that's, the, that's like um, the, uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I've seen the, I've mm. seen the movie. I've mm. read a little bit of, of the first book. Oh, you need to finish it. I, I didn't finish the first book because I started realizing that there's like a ton of them. Like there's, no, there's <laughs> not. There's more story there. There's only there. five of them. Okay. Yeah. It took me There's five books. Isn't in the, the wheel of time? It, it, it took me. Yeah. It took me one summer to get all the Chronicles of Narnia because it was summer. <laughs> right. Okay, right. First right. off, there's seven of those books. Yes, but they're right. only and this they're big. They're all like two day reads. Only yeah. like this big. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and and it's all the same Christian story without the Christian names. I mean, it's, it's you know it just kind of expands upon itself until it starts going. Well, to be honest. It's, I like the I like the the Chronicles of Narnia stories. They actually they were told re really really well. Yes, yes, they, um, actually, I, like especially I, all the the sea adventure ones, uh, Caspian and stuff. Like those yeah. those are re really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and then I went from there to James and the Giant Peach, and it just kind of went downhill from there. So, <laughs> <laughs> actually, I never read James and the Giant. Peach. Really, really? Yeah. Oh, that oh. was so good. There, there's, it, it's one of those things. Like this is one of those first times when I was reading a book as a child that I started thinking meta. And I was like, okay, yeah. well, here's the story as it's presented. And then the thought occurred to me, well, what if James is actually by himself this entire time and all the other characters are just voices in his head? What if he's, oh. what if he's not in on a peach floating along? What if he's actually like in a car accident and he's trapped physically and he's just going through this adventure in his mind? Like as a fourth grader, that was an astounding thought process. <laughs> So, oh yeah, wow. or yeah. or even the thought that this is all metaphor, right? That that you know James may be a little boy, but all these spiders are pe or, or or all these insects or whatever are people, and he's 
traveling somewhere and these people are around, you know, like yep. you, you can, you can go into some, some really weird places with it. Yeah. If, if, if you take it all if, as if metaphor, you, if you like, take like it who's it, this fucking spider yeah. lady? <laughs> <laughs> you know, like seriously. If, if you take it at face <laughs> oh, value, it's a great kid's book with lots of little narrative and interactions and different personalities involved with the different characters and stuff like that. But if you take it just, just one bowl of Cheerios past kid level, Man, it's, it's there's so much you can read into that. It's it gets pretty it's crazy. It's okay, a track, so uh, right, yeah. A, a movie that's coming out this year, the BFG, is based on a book. Have do you guys are you guys familiar with this at all? Mm -mm. I've heard it. I've I've heard of the movie. I've, I've probably seen a clip or two somewhere, uh, of you know, a trailer or whatever. But I but I'm not familiar. I'm, I'm in okay. I'm well, in no a, commercial it's a land. So. Book. The BFG is a, a children's book, and it actually stands for Big Fucking uh, Gun. Big, big Fucking Gun. Big, no wait, right? I'm sorry, yes, wrong right. Game. Exactly. <laughs> it stands for Big Big Friendly Giant. No. And my my kids came home from school, like each of them on their own, at, you know, four years apart, came home from school, <laughs> telling me about the BFG. I know the BFG is the Big Fucking Gun from. It's Quake. God, like yeah, yeah. from Quake. Are you yes, yes. From Quake. At school. Yes, because like, I did. <laughs> <laughs> so even now like with this movie trailer the bfg i'm that's the first thing that comes in my mind every time big fucking gun <laughs> oh man and see that's that's the problem i have with this movie name because i i I'd heard it was like a, some disney thing or whatever but like that's the problem i have all the parents like they're our age or maybe a little older you know i'm i'm in my early 30s like you guys are probably around my age it's maybe a little if, maybe if a little older our kids are going to see this stuff <laughs> What are you know, like we're like, dude, this is Quake. Like, I literally played this in my computer lab in high school at lunch. Mm. <laughs> yep. was, and no, no, it was good. We got teachers in there. And I, I was in, I, uh, I, I was, I was in, uh, I was in the newspaper in publishing class playing Oregon, playing, Oregon Trail Quake? and Quake. Oh, yeah. Well, see, you played Quake it. Well, I, I decided in, in, in our little publishing, our little newspaper publishing, the seventh grade newspaper publishing or whatever, we, um, we had this this issue where nobody understood how to do the publishing software and make things work and the layers and everything else, except for this guy. <laughs> so I would. Did you guys use Paint Maker or something? Um, I don't even remember what it was called, but it was it was complete crap and it was all black and white and it, and it was just the worst software that I'd ever actually figured out. But they would go out and I'd, I would I'd kick out my little ideas during our little newspaper meetings, you know, little media meetings. You know, kick out my ideas. Let's do a story about this, and let's do a story about that. And I never did any of them because once we, once the everybody left to go do their stories, you know, and you had like a you know a week or whatever to get your story together. So we'd, you know, on on Thursday I had to have all the stories, or they had to have all the stories, and then Friday we would publish. Right? Okay, cool, fine. I wouldn't do shit all week long, and then Thursday would come along. <laughs> And they'd start bringing me all their stories and the graphics they wanted to use and this and that. And, you know, like, and I would sit there and that's what I would do. I'd just sit there and do all the layout and everything else and actually put the paper together. And then Friday would come along and publish and the teacher would be like, why is your name on every story? <laughs> 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 but yeah, like Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, all I did was sit there and play, you know, whatever games we could find on the computer. And there were, there were tons of them on there. Like, <laughs> Oh, yeah. So we had, we had teachers at lunch playing with us. It was great. Like, yeah. we had, like literally, the computer lab teacher was like, "Oh yeah, dude, you guys want to play Quake? I, I know you got it hidden on the network. Just show me where it is so we can play." <laughs> you know? yep. like, cause, yeah, because we, we were we were all the computer the uh, the programming class kids too. You know, it was like half dozen of us mm -hmm. or so that were actually in like the only programming class that that the school had at the time. It can't. Um, you, and, you remember <laughs> the programming? It was class? hilarious because. You know, this is the stuff that we grew up on. Like, I, I got my first computer at 10. You know, like, it's, it's the first thing I took apart and put back together, and it worked again. <laughs> <laughs> it's a careful distinction. So, hey, can't, you remember, yeah, uh, you remember the computer lab for our high school? Um, kind of. In, in uh, like, junior high, the Tandy 1000s? Oh, no, no. Are you talking about the, the TRS 80s? Yeah. Yeah, Radio Shack TRS eighty. Oh my 80s? god! Like it was, yeah. they had six k of RAM. If I remember, it was right. it was amazing. It was amazing that class. Like I, I sat there oh, for yeah, I sat there for for twelve weeks to learn how to type in run. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was yeah. awful. The teacher had no idea what they were teaching. It was like okay, somebody gave him a syllabus 
in a bunch of computers and said, here, teach this. And they were like, uh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're talking about yeah, Mr. Right. Robertson, a.k.a. SF. Uh, what was it? SFBM, I think, was what we called. No, no, no. SFBF. That's what we called him. Short, fat, bald fucker. <laughs> Oh, I hated that class. I sat right right <laughs> next to Valina Lindley in that class, and her and I would just sit there and make fun of things. It was yeah, great. of course. Well, that's what we did in history <laughs> class too. Yeah, and shop. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, okay, and, and shop, and what, what in English? Ah, oh, like every class I had with Valina was just making fun of other people. I know. I think you had more classes with Valina than. I, like I, I only ever thought I, I only ever had seven classes. I think you had like five of them with Belinda. Yeah, we were well, <laughs> Lindley and Lemos. I mean, it just tied in together. Like our not, right. our lockers were right next to each other. <laughs> yeah. and, and and the terrible thing was we hated each other. Like nah, the the, 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 the biggest. No, the, you two were flirting. No, you didn't really hate each other. You were flirting. We, we were we were flirting with nothing to show for it after six years. No, I don't think. That, I think <laughs> <laughs> the first time we ever actually got along and laughed together was my high school reunion at, at my ten year high school reunion that you were deployed for. Really? Yeah. 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 I was until in, then we were I was always in Iraq. Yeah, yeah, we were always like attacking each other. Like some of them, some of the <laughs> best insults mine. I have ever laid upon a person to hurt them, like their soul to crush their soul. <laughs> With oh, she was the gut of so many, so many of those great <laughs> insults. I wish I could have them back. Yeah, right. <laughs> so many, so many more worthy people nowadays. But yeah, that was fun. So back, yeah, back to back to trash eighties. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, that that shit. Yeah, I don't remember a whole lot about it other than just loading discs into it constantly. Oh, and okay. Run. So, so here, here's a here's a quick story for you about the trash eighties. We were sitting in class, and like three days into class, the uh, the 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 teacher was like, "Okay, well, uh, Anthony, you're going to be the computer, and so and so, you're going to be the programmer." Okay, cool. Now this is like thir- three days into eighth grade or whatever, right? And uh, I'm standing there, and they're like, "Okay, uh, turn." was the command. And I was like, okay. So I started turning and I turned like, you know, just whatever direction, like 45 degrees, whatever, and stopped. Well, this is a huge thing about, well, they never told you to stop. They never told you which direction to turn. They didn't tell you blah, 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 blah. Oh, and it was I see. one of those things. So gotcha. then I sat back down and, and what, what is on Valina's screen when I sit back down? Cause you know, the first thing I do is sit down and look over her, right? What's on her screen. It says, uh, it's like it's like slash uh, close space fly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. My fly was open the whole time for that entire ten minutes in front of the whole, in the entire class. Nice. <laughs> that is so classic, Amos. Oh, yeah, I love that story. Yeah, that, that was that was that was how her and I rela- her and I's relationship went for the, all those years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was telling you to close your fly instead of open it. Mm. It was great. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Another another pseudo. Let's just go meta as much as we can. Hey man, uh yeah. <laughs> so so Kent, you've got a uh you've you've got one of these to talk about this week. All right, so James Veach, this is what happens when you reply to spam email. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> You got to watch this thing. Everybody needs to click this this link in the show notes and watch this damn TED Talk. Holy crap. It's this British dude. He got a spam email one day. They some, somehow got through his his spam filter. Ended up in his inbox. And it was it was a, just somebody saying, "Hello James Veach. I want you to help me sell gold or something like that." Right. So he was like, oh, God damn it, spam. And he was about to delete it. And he was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to I'm going to reply. So he replied this is to like it. talking to the telemarketers that call you saying they're from Windows support. Oh, right? my God. Yeah. OK, so on that note, real quick, Kent's stepdad, before he passed away, would take the time to talk to anybody who would want to talk to him. So if there were like telemarketers on the phone, and th- this is an old rotary phone, by the way, this isn't like, you know, some like you can, he, <laughs> he couldn't just carry it to him to go make a sandwich and then go sit down and watch TV or whatever. No, it, he was like stuck to the general vicinity of this rotary phone. <laughs> or if uh, the, the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses would come knock on the door, like at, at the end of it, they'd be begging to leave because they're like, we, we, got, yeah. <laughs> we, we have nothing left to tell you. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my god, oh, yeah. good, he was a goofy stuff. fuck, but man, he was a, he was one of those kind souls. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. So anyway, absolutely. back to James Beach. So, <laughs> yeah, right. so, so he so he replies to this spammer, and the spammer replies back to him, and it just starts this this like months long email chain, and he gets this person convinced that he wants to continue this and wants to get, get into this gold business with him, but he's worried about security and needs to like he thinks that we need to start typing in code. So he sends this person a code that he wants them to type in. And it's things like gummy bear instead of bank and like things like that. And it just goes from there. And it just becomes this elaborate thing. You just got to watch it, man. This one is a, a very, very high rec. This, this is, is like my favorite TED talk of all time. <laughs> it's like trolling in its highest forms. It's yeah. like you're just trolling, just trolling the, the, the troll. fullest of the trolls. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That's awesome. Oh, it's so I need, good. need five pence for you to cross this bridge. <laughs> yeah, well, I need $42 for you to take my five pence. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a taxes, oh, bitch. All right, so, so so there you go. There's a there's a high rec for the TED Talk this week. All right, yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, awesome, awesome. All right, now we are uh, we are going to interrupt the podcast. Uh-oh. We are going to interrupt the podcast. We have a very special public service announcement uh, ah. that uh, that we have to we we need to we need to put out there. Is it from our friend Wade? Uh, uh, uh. This message is brought to you by Deadpool. Gentlemen, how well do you know your happy sack? I'm sure you rummage around downstairs more than mommy would like, but it's time you started paying attention to your favorite pastime because that bag of beans bouncing around in your hand could be trying to kill you. What? Yeah. This is because so good. Because testicular cancer is the most common form of cancer in men aged between 15 and 35. It's time to fight back. Hold each of your man berries, or as I like to call them, smooth criminals, <laughs> in turn between your thumb and fingers. Give them a gentle roll around. Don't get too excited, though. You're on a mission here. You also need to check the tubes around the back. <laughs> okay, okay, for the audio listeners. <laughs> <laughs> He's sitting on a pool table with the pool with the cue ball or the uh, the, the the billiard balls like strewn about on the table with the with the pool stick. He, he's he, he's there's like a little fire in the background. He's just chilling out and he's 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 fondling this eight ball the entire time. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then right as he starts talking about how to perform a testicular examination, a little graphic pops up. This guy like you know a little, a little picture of a scrotum with nuts just hanging there, <laughs> and, yep. and fingers just fondling it. <laughs> yes, it's fantastic. All right, okay, here we go. <laughs> That's the spermatic cord and epididymis, but I'm sure you knew that. If it any- All right, how many times? How many times did he have to say epid- epididymis? <laughs> <laughs> if at any point you feel an unusual lump, size shift, or irregularity, don't ignore it like a pussy. Man up and talk to your doctor. The alternative is not an option. Check those bad boys <laughs> at least once a month after a bath or shower. So the next time you're shopping for one in the sexy salad section, remember to tweak the tomatoes before you go cucumber crazy. <laughs> Puns. Hashtag touch yourself tonight. <laughs> so good. Such a uh, great message. Thanks, Wade. I, I am I'm 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 so looking forward to this movie. Yeah, like, oh, yeah, God. seriously. This, this movie could like the plot could suck. It could just be just just formulaically just shitty, but it's still going to be an awesome movie. Oh uh, yeah, because this is going. Oh, yeah. well, this is basically the exact the exact comic book put in celluloid. Basically, is what this is. Oh. It, well, this it, is um, they're they're actually continuing what was like what X Men three or whatever, right? The uh, are, Wolverine, were, the first Wolverine movie, uh, X Men Origin is Wolverine. That what it was where they where yeah. they had because it was still Ryan Reynolds doing it. Yeah, um, yeah. Which is arguably probably the best person to pick. I, for, I, I don't know. I don't. Dad. I don't know that there's much of an argument there. I mean, that's yeah. like <laughs> he's. I mean, just in the the trailers and everything else, he's really nailing the the essence of of everything oh, yeah. that I think Deadpool should be. You know, absolutely. Yeah, Deadpool's just basically a big middle finger to the world. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like fuck. Well, you. I mean, I'm the, gonna... the, the character yeah. was created as a joke. The the character itself is a parody, right? Yeah, 
No, and it's, that's why I that's why I was annoyed at that movie for making it all serious. You know, yeah. oh, he's the piece together mutant that's going to kill you all. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and I love how and I love how in in all the marketing, he's making fun of that movie and the Green Lantern movie. It's so yes. it's so great. Have you seen the new poster where it's it's he's posed just like he was in the Green Lantern poster? And on his hand, instead of having the Green Lantern ring, he's got like a, a ring pop mm. on his hand. Yep. <laughs> yep. So good. Oh, it's, it's Even if this movie is garbage, this bro. movie needs to win awards for marketing. So good. <laughs> well, f- to for most of their marketing to happen during the Star the Star Wars hype, like the build up to the Force Awakens, and then yep. the, it still comes out, and it's still you know yeah it's. And to come out on Valentine's weekend, like I can't think of anything I'd rather be doing on Valentine's oh, weekend. Oh yes, we will definitely be there. And did you see the poster where it's it's making it look like it's a romantic comedy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, was, that was a whole trailer. That was, oh, that was a whole trailer. So oh, was it a whole yeah, trailer? It was a whole trailer. I don't know. Yeah, oh, yeah all, it's so good. It, it is they so amazing. In, yeah, they all blend in now because there's been so many trailers and TV spots and little little just clips and posters and holy shit man that marketing awards right here this is this is insane oh yeah this is probably my favorite marketing campaign for anything ever here we go here's the uh oh, here, here's the the poster yeah movie man lucas put the poster and of, cor- of course they got the the rmp logo like over top of it <laughs> there you go yeah <laughs> <laughs> beautiful so, oh, and there's the uh, there's the romantic version. Uh, yeah, yeah. See, that's the uh, that's the the. Uh, uh, somebody can throw the the a link to the trailer in there. I'll, I'll throw that on there too. Um, yeah, this is so good, so good, <laughs> so amazing. Um, so uh, so let's get to a little something something a little serious. I mean, I know testicular cancer is pretty serious, but I'm past the I'm past the 35 threshold. Like, I have other cancers to worry about now. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> colon cancer. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, nose cancer. Like I, there's, there's tons of other cancers. Lymphoma yeah. is, is a thing now, you know? So, um, right. so I'm going to get to a little, some, something a little bit more serious. This is a, uh, this, there, there's a thing called shirtless shamers 2016. This woman goes and she finds all these these uh, Twitter posts and, and things like that about these guys that are talking about how they can't stand it when a woman posts mostly naked pictures and then you know blah 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 and then they have their own. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this on, on the on the screen too. Um, if my girlfriend was taking a half naked pic for the internet, I honestly think I'd kill her. LOL. And then oh, half naked pictures of himself of himself, right. So, uh, I'll take a woman any day with class and beauty over one who posts half naked photos in different angles of her booty. And then pictures of himself Shirt- shirtless, yep. different angles. Yeah. It's, it, it is really just amazing. Like I, this is one of those things that I see on the internet and it just restores the, the, the faith that I have in, in, in humanity that there are actual people out there calling people out for this stupid shit, you know? So what do you guys yep, think? Right. Do you, do you think there's a double standard on on uh, social media about uh, body image and sharing? Oh, you, you're goddamn right there is. But that's just uh, – social media is just a reflection of the rest of society. Uh, it's – I mean, it's the same everywhere. This is – social media is just a – it's an easy place to go to to look at it instead of, like, having to go to the mall to see how the kids talk to each other or having to go to whatever. We can just pull it up on – Facebook or or Twitter or whatever and see it, um, but yeah, it's a, you're damn right. There's a double standard and it's fucked up. Now, granted, I mean, just like with with the rest of society, it's not not everyone thinks this way. I mean, not not even close. I mean, I would say I would venture to say that most people don't think this way, but there is a a vocal portion that does think this way and does project their their thoughts out there and yeah it's it's i don't know it's a it, it's a it's a shame you talk about the word shame it this that it's a shame that people think that way 
What about you, Alex? Do you think the, that this is something that should be curbed on social media? Or is this something that, that uh, should be handled more directly, a um, little, little less a- uh, aggressive pa- or passive-aggressively? I may be the wrong person to ask on this, this particular subject because I feel like social media in general can be curbed, especially in the vein of... Uh, half naked pictures and ridiculous selfies and duck faces and like <laughs> I can continue on with race, gender, and any other stereotype you want. They've all got one that sucks. So- hey Alex. <laughs> hey Alex. By the way, 2005 and and MySpace called. They want their duck faces back. <laughs> I know, right? Like it's no, it's not even like it was a thing, and then it went away, and now it's a thing again. It's like the '80s; it just will not die. Oh my God, <laughs> are duck faces back? Oh God, I, just, I, just, I don't know. To be yeah. honest, I don't think they ever left. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just they just got backed into a corner, and then you know no, nobody puts baby in a corner, so <laughs> she had to get yeah. broken out. Nobody puts duck face in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> and no, title. I, just, I really feel like like. I'm a non-drama person, right? Like, that's why I don't go on Facebook because I I don't want to know any of it. I don't care. I don't don't want you to know what you had for lunch. I don't, like, if I, that's why I actually enjoy Twitter is because I I can set it right over here on the side of my screen and I can look at it. Oh, okay. And then continue on with my day. Like, it's, it's, I can look over and see something that's happening right now that I might want to care about or click a link to or now, whatever you visit and otherwise i can just continue on with what i'm doing i don't have to scroll through hours of other people's shit that they posted because i want to read about it no <laughs> i don't <laughs> no no right, right. you you have uh, you've recently proclaimed on the on the chat realm that you check facebook about 3 times a year I think that's being generous. <laughs> <laughs> but, he, he checks but, yeah, occasionally it, to see if his account still exists. <laughs> it, it's really more like somebody sends me a friend request or something that I actually recognize, and I'm like, oh, sure. Like, I'm not sure what it'll get you, but you could be my friend on Facebook. <laughs> you Look can see my profile that... picture. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've deleted, yep. like, all this shit from Facebook. I'm sure there's probably something that's auto-posting for me, but... I don't care. <laughs> I don't go there. Nice. You know, it doesn't matter. I, uh, I I actually spend a lot of time on Facebook. It's it's not my way to keep in touch with people as much as it is. I just really enjoy listening and, and watching and reading other people's jokes and shit like that. That's really what it comes down to for me. Yeah, you know, if you can find something that you enjoy in, in anything, really, in any platform, then then enjoy it. Like, I'm all for it. And, and that's awesome. But but I feel like what, what people most often end up using Facebook for is cat videos bullshit yeah it's bullshit like it's the type of thing that that should go on Snapchat or Twitter or something that tends to just roll away with time because nobody cares whereas with Facebook it's like those things are purposefully surfaced you know it's, it's, it's like oh you haven't heard from this person in 16 hours here's their last 16 hours of information you know, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, it's more like I it's more like I feel like Facebook tells me what I want to see, whereas Twitter, I pick the people and they just fly by so far <laughs> you know, like, for, it's for just, now. It, it's just simple. Yeah, I don't have to <laughs> care about Twitter. Like, that's literally my only interaction. Am I following you? Do I want to like your post? Like that's about <laughs> it. You know, I don't have to think any more than that. And, and, and it just it, it's simpler to me. And. And now, like, I don't I don't backlog anything. I don't go through anything more than about 10 minutes old. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, well, for Twitter, I'll go through and if it's been like a long day, because it's typically what I do is I start at the top and then kind of scroll down. And whenever I see something I've already seen or when it starts getting boring or I get distracted by life, it's it's done. I just, I'm, OK, right. move on. But with Facebook, it's. Like you can scroll down forever and ever and ever and never see the same thing over again from the same person because there's so much going on. And I just scroll down until I find something funny. Like if, if the, my, my biggest thing is those, uh, a, a, a like equals a prayer, a share equals a, uh, an amen. And 
Oh jeez. Oh my god. Yeah. Like I just kill me. Yeah, now. I want I want to shoot everyone in the <laughs> face as soon the as I worst, see that shit. That is the cancer of the internet. Like it's the how, chain letter. How it's yeah, like yeah. how yeah. trolly do you have to be? It, or how I mean we you basically just sitting there preying on people's belief in an invisible man in order to try to gain something for your social account like i'm i'm sure right. there is something very very wrong with that whole scenario no matter how like, you look at it regarding any debate of of existence or not of said deity or multiple or whatever you care to believe <laughs> exploiting any of that exactly. feeling for personal gain exactly that's, yep. that's yep. dick in any language <laughs> See, <laughs> like, <yeah. laughs> seriously <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. that that's a uh, that's a title contender there. That, that's one of the things that I just I just absolutely that's hate. Dick, that's a dick in any language. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Kent, you've got a you've got one more thing on here, uh, Dante Basco. Oh, okay. All right, Dante Bosco, guys. Bosco. Wait, yeah. Not my fault. Uh, you misspelled his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, so this guy, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of this guy. I know, Amos, that you have not yet watched Avatar The Last Airbender, even though it's pretty much the greatest work of fiction that has ever existed in the history of ever. Uh, Alex, okay. have, you, have, you, have you seen Avatar The Last Airbender? I'm afraid to say no. <laughs> <laughs> Can I decline to answer? <laughs> right. that, that's a, that's a, that non-answer is answer no. All right. Well, it's, okay. it's one of those on my list items. You know, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely. It's, I've been told it's amazing, but I haven't gotten there yet. Look, look, yeah, look! So look I'm, 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 I'm innocent by proxy. My wife has watched all of them and loves them, so that's got to give me something, right? Right, right. <laughs> so, all right. How about this one? Hook. Do you remember Rufio? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes, I saw okay. Hook. Yeah. Okay, Dante Bosco was Rufio. That's oh, where okay. most. That's where most people would recognize. Then him why didn't from. you start with that? Because I don't really so, care that much about Hook. This is some reverse engineering shit you're trying to pull on us right now. <laughs> Remind me to come back to this, because I have things to say about Pan. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Shit's going to get real after after this small segment. We'll, we'll continue uh, to talk about Rufio, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, Dante Bosco has gone on to do a lot of voiceover work. He was Prince Zuko in Avatar The Last Airbender. Um, he was even a, uh, I guess, an Imperial recruit, I guess is what you would call it, in Rebels Season 1. Um, so that, that makes him even cooler because he's in Star Wars now. I still um, haven't seen that either. <laughs> me, me neither. Me neither. You're not alone on that one. I've already fought that good. fight. So good. Anyway, uh, he's, done a, he's done a lot of voiceover work. I'm a huge fan of his. I've kind of been stalking him on social media over the last couple of weeks, and I want him as a guest on this very show. Dun, dun, dun. So over the next week or so, I'm going to be tweeting things about him or to him, and I would very much appreciate it if Diamond Club, Chat Realm, all the RMP viewers would retweet or like or in some way, shape, or fashion promote my attempts to contact him there we go yeah absolutely i've i'm following you now on on twitter it's another one of those things that somehow i wasn't not sure was, <laughs> right? I, yeah. I swear to god i clicked it after the last time after the the last show we were on like i pretty sure i followed you guys but i don't, I, well, I don't even bother with that would you you, you have to watch out with kent go. though you have to watch out with that yeah this got that rm underscore so you know, right, the, right, right. the the well, late to the internet. I don't care about Twitter because I don't understand it. I I had to I had to put an <laughs> underscore or a number or some shit. Yeah. But, <laughs> but anyway, so at Dante Bosco, it, at D A N T E B A S C O. That's that's his Twitter handle. So anyway, if you if you see anything, please by all means. Cool. <laughs> what what else you got, Amy? Right, or no, uh, actually, no, no, no. no, no. Let's cut, move on cut, to Pan. Yeah, I want to hear about Pan. Pan. I'm, I'm, okay. I've only got one thing left, and it's going to finish the show. Pan, no, I did not see the show. Well, maybe. Wait, okay. um, no, I haven't seen it. It's fairly new. It was just in theaters, what, a couple months ago? Probably? Yeah. Pre uh, yeah. Yeah, it was supposed to be like the last movie in the last movie draft, but it got pushed back a month and a half or something for release date, so it got pushed out of that movie mm. draft. Oh, okay, um, okay. 
If it's not in the torrents yet, I haven't seen it. Pretty sure that was it. Um, anyway, we we saw it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Like, <laughs> okay, give give us a quick synopsis of the movie, like like a a, a, a ten second synopsis of the movie. Just a few. Yeah, sentences. tell tell us what this is. What is Pan? This is uh, where where Hook was after Pan. This is before or after uh, uh, Peter Pan. You know the the original movie. Um, this is pre, right? This is, this is supposed to be origin story. It is okay. the biggest pile of shit. Like, I don't even know where to start. Okay. <laughs> they have, they have like, they're without context. This, this isn't gonna like, I don't know. There is slight context to this, but you are not missing much by not having context. Okay. So there's, there's masses of people think, uh, uh, Fury Road, like you know, when when they're they're the the head guy, I can't remember his name, is coming out, and you know, there's all the people. You right, know? right, right. Any of any of those scenes that you've ever seen, similar idea. Then the the guy that kind of become it's he's like the hook <laughs> replacement for this movie because he's gonna be hook and it's it, but okay the biggest problem i had with this because this just reminded me that you can you tell how much this pisses me off <laughs> yes i know and i'm loving it i'm enjoying this no i know the the worst thing of all of it before i get back to the big masses of people the worst thing of all of it they do not show you him getting his hand bitten off they don't say it it doesn't happen in the movie it does not happen it goes from this to Peter Pan where his hand is gone. So there's no, and they there's, talk about no how much crocodiles. he hates crocodiles and all this. Like I'm like, opportunity fucking missed, people. <laughs> like fuck? it'll be in the deleted scenes, apparently. <laughs> I, how do you how do you cut that from this is origin story? How do you cut I, like <laughs> so anyway, back to the masses of people. When this when this this hook guy comes out, or he's he's not, I forget what his name is in the movie. Like you can tell I I was so mad at this movie, I started watching it out of spite. <laughs> like, um, so he comes out, and they start singing Nirvana. Nirvana songs with no context. What? Yeah. They're, they're singing Teen Spells Like Teen Spirit with no context. <laughs> like, like, they're just... Okay, okay, okay. So, so, so uh, as far as this movie goes, what's canon to this movie? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anything. Like, I, I think this movie was supposed to take place before the original pan, like, as far as timeline goes. But I don't know that they actually ever, like, got permission. <laughs> like, I have no idea because this is so far off of things. Yeah, I exactly. Movie <laughs> Lucas is exactly right. What's the point of doing a sequel if you don't see him get his hand bitten off, or not, or or even have that explained? <laughs> like, oh my god. Oh, it's so mm. it's maybe, so maybe this, me. For this. Maybe this was like the setup to like Peter Pan, peanut butter. <laughs> it may have been I'm equally as possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's that's. Oh man. my god! You know, I wasn't impressed with the the trailer that I saw several months ago. I was like, uh, I'm not gonna go see that. So yeah, I'm glad I didn't. Holy crap! If, if you see awful. it in a red box or something, it's worth a dollar just because of how terrible it is. <laughs> <laughs> like it's one of those movies. It's like it's so bad, it, but like they tried so hard because it's got like great like graphics and stuff, and like there's this whole plot line about how. The fairies were were nearly wiped out of existence, and and none of this plot line actually has any bearing on any of the story until the last three minutes of the movie. <laughs> like, it's, so it's seriously, it's like they didn't know what they were. It's like they wrote the movie while they were shooting it. Oh my <laughs> god! Uh, I, I just don't get it. So That's so awful. here we go. Here's the trailer. I love you. Yeah. Hi, Peter. Exactly. Yep. You are extraordinary more than you can imagine i promise that you will see me again in this world this is the beginning or another this is not the end of me. okay so so i'm, I'm watching the, the 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 preview here and there's a chance this could all just be a dream no it's not <laughs> but you know, Damn so it. so okay, I'm, I'm totally gonna spoil this. Movie I was trying to, I was matter. trying here. I, I'm I'm never gonna watch it, so you can spoil it all you want. Right. So, 
that part where, where he's like in this orphanage thing at the beginning, um, you know, you know how he gets on the pirate ship that's sailing? They have pirates that are like, like, uh, what do you call it? Like rappelling down into this building somehow, snatching children and going back out. That's that's the whole like catalyst for this movie is them the these pirate people in flying ships stealing children and taking them to Neverland. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's pretty much that's the Lost Boys, I imagine. Right. That's, Was Rufio right. among them? Uh they didn't make <laughs> like note of it they didn't actually make a point of it um but but he was probably one of the there was some kids that were like important there to 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 paint peter pan or to i, I guess it, they never I, said his well, name was peter pan today. i, th I think peter. i think rufio i think rufio is only in hook i don't think that was a character from yeah. the book or anything else i think it was only in hook. oh speaking of hook yeah. this year is the 25th anniversary of hook oh of, my god of, am i that old of hook. you are hook like you are like the rob williams movie yeah 25 oh. years See now that was a good Peter Pan movie. Yeah, I enjoyed. No, it. Hook was actually pretty good. Yeah, that like was... it wasn't you know, amazing or anything, right. but it was it was a, it was a good continuation story. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, it took Peter it took Pan an Pan animated Pan. movie and then made it a real uh, or a, a, a live action sequel, and brought back a lot of the a lot of the same feelings from the original. I I, I enjoyed it. Right, Pan, yeah. not so much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't think I'm gonna watch that, even if it's on Netflix. Did, so did you, did you go to the theater to watch this? I'm, I'm guessing you did. No, no, we we, we saw it on a, 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 a DVD that, okay. that a friend of ours had had gotten from. Like he had bootlegged it from a friend. <laughs> so I was like, all right, let's watch Pan. You know, so, whatever. That's the so there was no there was it. no financial investment in this. <laughs> No, no. He's but the funny part is this this friend of mine, like he's got a he's got a buddy that's like, you know, old school like drug dealer buddy that sends him like these bootleg <laughs> DVDs that he gets off of like you know, people on the street in, in downtown Chicago and shit. Like it's it's hilarious to hear this guy's story. It's like that's that's a whole other thing. Oh, <laughs> you know? man. I should do a podcast with that guy, like if he knew what podcasts were. <laughs> <laughs> He's a you know like he's 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 in in his early fifties. He's from you know like downtown Chicago and stuff. And and like so he doesn't he knows nothing of tech. Like I'm a, his tech guy actually. I go that's how I really know him is I go and help him fix his computer shit that he breaks. So you know it's, as I assume most of us have that job with someone. Oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 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 What else? What else you got, Amos? Okay. I just got one one more thing. One more thing. Um. So a lot of people will recognize this. One of you is about to become our new Miss Universe. If for any reason she is unable so, to fulfill her duties, the first runner So this is a uh, let's get the, the ad, damn advertisement out of the way. Both of you. Now the Miss the interesting Universe part of this, the interesting part of this comes up a little bit later. Okay, so so he, he awards it to Miss Columbia. Says Miss Columbia's won it, blah 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 blah, and then I have to apologize. <laughs> oh, this is so good, so good. So this is all on live TV. I mean, this is this is Steve Harvey. The first runner up is Columbia. Miss Columbia didn't understand what the hell's going on. Miss USA is telling Miss Philippines, "Hey, it's you. You're good." Like it's this just this mass confusion. This is so good. Yeah. For live TV, this was amazing. So I ran across this this week, and um, I thought this was just just a, a class act. This is one of the things that sets Steve Harvey aside from a lot of other people that do live TV and and uh, have admitted mistakes and things like that. Steve Harvey goes on his normal show. And actually invites Miss Philippines, now Miss Universe, onto his show to talk about it. Now, let, let me ask you this, because this is the part that kept me up at night. What were you thinking when I came back on stage? When I was called first runner-up, I was thinking, oh, okay, uh, it's okay, Pia. You made it this far. There are 79 other people. 
beautiful girls in this pageant. And to be first runner-up is, is already a big deal, especially seeing she the reaction really well. of the Filipino community there. Mm -hmm. I saw I saw them and they were still waving the flag and they were so still so proud. Mm -hmm. That made me feel at ease that okay, at least I made them happy. At least they're proud of me and that's all that's important. Mm -hmm. So while I was waiting there and I saw you come back out, I kind of knew that there was something wrong already because when we rehearsed it, everything happened so fast. As soon as the girl is crowned, she gets to do her first walk right, right. away. And I was waiting for that. We were all waiting for it. And so when you came back out, um, well, I was surprised just like everybody else. Of course, when you <laughs> announced me as the winner, I was very excited. I was happy. And, but it was, I guess it was mixed feelings as well because I was yeah. concerned for yeah, Maria. That, that was, what, what, what were you feeling as you stood next to Miss Columbia? What, what was that like? <laughs> No, I'm sorry. This, <laughs> this reminds me of the old uh, Bob and Tom skit. How did that make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is a, this is one of those things. It was just it, it was interesting to have him bring her on the show and uh, sit there and talk about it and and to put out the video and everything else. And and I think she's the way she handled the whole thing was pretty pretty class act. But I figured that was worth sharing with uh, you know our, our watchers and listeners. So. There you go. There's there's what I got. Oh, cool. Sure. I think it's a show, man. Yeah. So hey, Alex, where where can people find more of you? Um, I'm on Twitter at Tinvec. I have Tinvec.com. I'm on twitch.tv slash Tinvec. Um like like I put in the doc. Just Tinvec all yeah. the things, you'll find me. Well what what are people <laughs> gonna find there? Um, let's see. I have the Diamond Dialogue is a podcast that I do with Diamond. It's an interview show with chat realm members. I, uh, I meant to ask you, I meant to ask mm -hmm. you, are, are there going to be future episodes of Diamond Dialogue? I want to hear <laughs> so, more. So obviously me and Kent don't talk because I've already tested him this like three times. <laughs> oh, yes, there will be. Um, I am Excellent. very bad at organization. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for rubbing it in, Kent. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, there, there will be, I just like, I, I just have so much I have to get together. Like, cause I also program too. And like, I'm, I'm working on the diamond. I like, I, I built the CTV bot and I'm working on the diamond club Android app and I'm working on the 2.0 version of Alpha Geek, so that's a pulling a Johnson, <laughs> and <laughs> um, so it uh, like it's, it's, it's so much shit that I do that I forget that I like have a show that I should probably you know attention to. <laughs> so yeah, I really I really have to get on it. Like like I've been like Neshcom was supposed to be on last season, but we just didn't connect and time didn't work out, and so I was like, yeah, hey, whatever, you know, we'll get to you next season. Well, shit. <laughs> you know, so Damn it, life, life keeps mm -hmm. happening. <laughs> but you know, you know what the awesome thing is, though? I made it a seasonal show. <laughs> I get to yep, pick yep. time between seasons, so I technically can't be faulted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Idiot, idiots to go on there and try to make a <laughs> weekly show or just, man, they're, they're stupid. Like, I don't understand why yeah. people, anybody would oh, make a weekly God. show. Idiots. <laughs> no, I, I really do want to do a, a weekly show one of these times. And, and like, it's part of my, I don't know, New Year's resolution or really more more goals for the year is I, I want to stream more on, on in many ways, you know, but I want to podcast more. I want to stream more games and, and stuff like that. So, so I'm, I'm gonna, it's something that I'm working towards. I'm going to show show someone's hand a little bit, but BioCow in the chat room has been talking about doing a Sunday morning call-in radio show. Or it's actually a Saturday morning, Saturday morning call-in radio show or something like that. Featuring uh, Diamond Club and Diamond Club regulars and everything else, and I think it's going to be amazing. So no pressure, oh. by Cal. No pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Rock on. We're we're waiting. <laughs> right. <And> go. <laughs> so um, uh, actually the the whole reason I started talking to Tim Deck was uh in the chat room, just mentioned a few things here and there, and kind of ran into him and, and you know knew his name from from uh, different Diamond Club uh shows and things like that. And I was like, yeah, I want to do a show uh, featuring some of these Diamond Club personalities that are always on and everything else. And Tim Dick's like, uh, you mean like 
Diamond Dialogue. <laughs> I was like, I wait, mean, go ahead. Yeah. You, you probably do it better. I'm just saying. What, I, I, I was like, kind of did that. What is what is that? Oh my god, what is that? And yeah, that weekend was a was a, a weekend full of watching that show. And it's it's, it's actually a really good show. Um, I especially like now if you've ever seen if you've ever seen Alex on any other show. Tonight's a little bit different. I think he's had a few beers. But if you've ever seen Alex on any other show, he, he's he's like there's this nervousness that's about him. Like he's happy to be on the show and he wants to put forth, you know, uh, part of the conversation, things like that. But he's always like almost apprehensive about it. But then you watch Diamond Dialogue and that's how he is the whole show. He's like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be hosting. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and it gets better as, towards the end. But like the first season was like, Oh man, he's he's really doing this for the love of it. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that that show definitely improved as it went along. That's for sure. Yeah. I, I I really enjoyed Diamond Dialogues. That was so cool. <laughs> I I have like a, a I I don't know if it's like a mental disability or something, and I think Scott Johnson suffers from the same one. Like I cannot get the word I want sometimes. Like I'm I'm just I'm trying so hard to dig it out of my brain, and it's uh, not. Uh, coming to me and it's something yeah. simple like i'm looking for the word table oh, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. yep. anyway, it's called like, age it's called age yeah yeah, yeah right so, I, I, so, just, I just cannot i, I have i have so. that same thing i just stumble through it and look like an idiot it's it's one of those balance things it's like do you do you not say anything or do you just w risk looking like an idiot and well yeah <laughs> idiot right. camp over well, here it, there's there's that and, and i just generally have like like I think it's, it's pretty much most people have a sort of performance anxiety. I'm being on anything that I mean, even even though I was, I, you know, I was in competition marching band and competition jazz band. And like I, I did a whole bunch of stuff for band that I was in competition with, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff for school and nerdy, nerdy stuff. I was in knowledge bowl. And wait, I, I didn't wait, 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 the, the guy that makes his living <laughs> programming and yeah. has, has done a lot of the back end for a geeky online channel for people to stream on was a nerd in high school Go. No. Oh, what? no oh that same guy that used to play uh diablo with his math teacher at lunch and uh quake with his computers uh typing teacher at exactly lunch. Yeah. exactly <laughs> like, oh I, speaking of diablo I, the original diablo those little troll things that used to pop out like the the mass there's there's one creature that's like there was in Diablo one. It was the go to. Hey, we just need fifty creatures to run at the hero. It was like these little imps or something like that, and they made the sounds like. Mm. Yeah. It was exactly the same sound as the sliding door, those sliding glass doors at the front of the Shaw Clinic. So one day I'm sitting down there waiting for a prescription for an hour and a half. I'm hearing imps, and it was at the same time that like that was when I was playing Diablo like hardcore like all the time. So it was almost right. like PTSD. I was sitting there and somebody come through the door and, it... and like... <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. For the first maybe ten times I was looking around seeing if somebody was playing on their laptop. Like, who's playing Diablo in here? Right. What the fuck? You know, that's probably the, the series that I've played the longest, um, uh, of any well, I mean, unless you want to count Warcraft, the original Warcraft as part of the StarCraft series. Um, because then I've played that since original Warcraft. But but yeah, I've played original Diablo and I still play I would just playing earlier tonight with my wife. We we play Diablo three now. So see, I never played it's, Diablo two. I never I, I like skipped the entire Diablo two. I don't know why. And and that yeah, you missed out on the real boom of the the Diablo world. Like, cause dude, fourteen years of just keeping up continually with a game and patching it and adding things and like they're they're even topping themselves with that with Diablo 3 like I can I honestly cannot say enough about Blizzard as far as a company they're pretty much the best game company there is I, I can't think of a better one yeah and in fact I can't think of a one I like other than Blizzard I hate every other game company Activision EA like <laughs> e e Activision even oops. Activision <laughs> even owns oh, yeah, Activision. Yeah. Hey, so bad. <laughs> Fuck this microphone. I know. <laughs> no. Activision even owns Blizzard, and I hate Activision. Like, <laughs> seriously. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, Blizzard yeah, is, the, is the only the only other major amazing. major game store or game uh, game company that I can think of is from back in the day, and that's that's back during the uh, the heyday of Capcom. Mm, yeah, Capcom. They, was they, good. they were amazing. I don't I don't even know why they trailed off, but you know I wasn't really paying attention to to them for a while there, but. Back in the day, back when Mega Man was coming out and everything else, I mean, they were like every time you loaded up a game, it was like, yes, I like this game. It had a Capcom symbol in the front of it. Yeah, you know, you know, and 
and, Di- or, and and Blizzard's been the same way. Like, you know, they had little things here, you know, uh, Warcraft had come out, or they had, you know, StarCraft II, the first expansion, or the first, you know, whatever round come out. And, and, and then it was kind of, it, it's just been quiet, you know, like, because mostly World of Warcraft news for them. And then all of a sudden, boom, you have Hearthstone, you know, or actually I should say it really started with Diablo II Diablo. expansion announcement. You know, StarCraft II, third expansion announcement, Hearthstone, you know, yeah. like, they just, it, Overwatch, like, they've just been slamming them out. And this is just after, you know, a, just a year or two after the company stated that they destroyed a project that they've been working for, like, 15 years on. It was their replacement for WoW. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, Titan. And now, nope, 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 fuck all that. It's not going to work right. Fuck it. Move on. Overwatch. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> it, know, it, like it, it amazed me because they came out with uh, with Diablo 3. And it was just amazing. And then right after oh. that, they came out with Hearthstone. And, you know, they had this... For Hearthstone, they had like an eight-month open beta. It was like ridiculously long. Like you could sign yeah. up for it and, you know, people were getting into the into the early alpha. And then they did the beta and then they started doing these wipes. And then they had like a... I don't know, it was, it was multiple months where they didn't have any wipes. They were like, we're done with wipes. Just go play and you know we'll wipe again before live release. But it was like a couple months where people were just playing constantly. And it you know it allowed this community to grow up and everything else before the game was even released. And I think that was the first time that I was really looking at, at Blizzard like, wow, they really know what the fuck they're doing. They're not just putting out good games. They're really building the, the whole environment up before they step into it. Oh, yeah. I forgot about Heroes. Like... <laughs> Seriously, oh, yeah, yeah. Heroes, of, Heroes the of the Storm. Yep. You took the, yeah, mobile world and turned it on its head, just like you did with card games. Like, in in all in the same three month period. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't even know how they how they managed to handle it all because it's it's it, insane. Just just even thinking about it from technological aspects, like regardless of programming and PR and marketing and all this other shit they have to do. Like, you know, just, just just from the technological restraints of having to get that many people to play on servers together and make it work. Yeah. Like, and Look, and, and um, not to mention, you're challenging League of Legends, a, a, a literal pillar of the MOBA community. Yeah. And, and, well, though arguably, you created MOBA. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, so... Right. Uh, <laughs> that, was, that was their last big mistake was eh, yeah you can do whatever you want you know, we're not gonna yeah we're not gonna bother with it yeah and then oh yeah i, don't, I wouldn't that, even the, call that a mistake yeah, the, that, the, the, that's the, kind the, of what that decision is what kind of blew up the the genre right yeah so it, it, it's, it's, that, it's that lack decision of, kind of made it what it is today lack of early capitalization <laughs> yep. but yeah, yeah it, was, it worked it was a risk and it yeah, I mean, some could argue that it that it didn't monetarily pay off, but I I would argue that it did, kind of long term. It did. Yeah. So there's yeah, there's anyways, a uh, there's a Microsoft game out there. Since we're talking about games, there's a Microsoft game. I thought out we there. were closing the show, and now we're back on games. <laughs> Look, we're, we're in episode two, so um, <laughs> there's a Microsoft game out there about like uh, it's not even about colonizing worlds. It's about. Uh, uh, building forts and flying to different ancient or other galaxies and and it's one of those real-time strategy games you know and it was amazing and it came with when it when you bought the game it came with two discs one for each person so you could play against each other open over open land and, oh, right. and i can't remember and can't find what, what it was and i want to find an equivalent of that for today that would be just amazing to me that, that was such a fun fun game anyway that's my little two cents on that <laughs> so it's like the, I, the Microsoft I, game they released and it was amazing and they didn't do shit with and it just got forgotten. Now I can't even find traces of it. Oh, so like I think most, I know what you're talking most about. Most Microsoft games. <laughs> yeah. No, most Microsoft <laughs> games aren't worth a shit. Yeah. I mean I what commercially successful, what are we talking? Halo and No 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 no, no 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 not Microsoft for Xbox. I'm talking like Microsoft. Yeah, right. Flight Sims. About okay, like flight, yeah, sim. flight yeah, sim. Flight Sim. Yeah, that was the other thing I was thinking. Yeah, okay, Flight, flight sims sim is about the only thing they get. They have, you know, <laughs> solitaire. <laughs> they got a no. solid solitaire standing. <laughs> and Minesweeper. And Minesweeper. Fuck you if you Heart, find a better Heartsy. Minesweeper. Yeah. <laughs> hearts is pretty damn good. Digging the hearts. My, Minesweeper is so successful. I mean, they are. It is so much of a of a Microsoft staple that there are millions of copies. Millions of copycat. <laughs> yeah. But Microsoft the, didn't give two shits about do it. PCs, do PCs still come with all those games? 
Uh, like Minesweeper and Hearts and Solitaire and shit. I don't know. I could, I could, I could find out real quick. I, no, I you have to install even... it now. Oh, really? Yeah, because I don't. I, yeah. I can't remember the last time I actually got a new PC. Like it's been. I mean, Bro, holy I haven't. Shit. It's probably it's probably been like six years since I bought a new. PC. I mean, I've done a fresh install of of Windows though, so I mean, yes, well, you, you have the options, but I, I don't sure. think it's even an option to install it now. Huh. Yeah, I don't, like, I don't, like, I don't see it, do it anywhere. After the fact, after you're already all installed and everything. I, I, don't, I don't know. There's, there's a, no, X, it's all Xbox Live Solitaire Collection and yeah. Oh, oh yeah, Planetary Annihilation. I totally, what? I totally played that. Planetary Annihilation? You found yeah. it? Like, I've been looking for this for weeks uh, and you found uh. it. <laughs> well, no, Vla uh, Vladimir Putin. I don't know. What's, what's the last of his name here? I got it's Vladimir, yeah, Vladimir Putin. Putin found it. I think yep. it's the yep, there you himself. Go. Yep. Damn, that's awesome. So now, now I got to so go find. I didn't that. know that the Russian premier was a member of Diamond Club. Um, actually, uh, hey, not you, only we take all kinds. Yeah, <laughs> we don't judge. <laughs> yeah, no, uh, we're, you're all welcome. Everyone, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> oh, I'm just as bad now with Murloc Paladin. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> all right. So back back to Tim Beck and where we, where we can find him at. <laughs> uh, yeah, oh yeah, Wait, is that where we were at? Jeez, God, <laughs> just, just just Google Tim Beck. Yeah, yeah Google right. Tin Beck. You'll find There's me. I'm the one that shows up for like twelve pages. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> and and how did you come up with Tin Beck? Oh, that's right. You just randomly made up some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it's a it's an anagram of my middle name. <laughs> I, I needed. I wanted something unique. Uh, it sounded like what could be a name, so it worked. And oh. it turns out it's like free on just about everything. So like I, I can usually just. And, you, know, you don't have to use underscores and numbers and shit. Yeah, yeah and underscores, and numbers, nah, fuck all that. <laughs> yeah, that's dumb. Um, so um, fuck so underscores. speaking of underscores, so you can find me on Twitter at <laughs> rm underscore del noche. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god if you're a beer guy you can also go to ratebeer.com and look up username del noche without any underscores and find out what i've been rating oh, where are you dude. at amos <laughs> so uh so so a couple things here real quick uh if you want a t-shirt like what ken's got right now just ritualmisery.com forward slash swag or forward slash support and you can find other ways to support the show and other things that we're working on um another thing that i'm actually working on is the undaunted podcast and unlike kent you can actually find Tin Vec on that on an upcoming episode. Should be oh, should well, be out yeah, this coming week. Produced, you haven't published that yet. I have not. I've been so busy that it, yeah, it's I've got a, I've got about four in the can still. So, but I need to line more people up. So, if you would like to come on and talk about how how you got into podcasting and what's your podcasting story and your failures and successes, by all means, let me know. That's a, a daunted podcast at gmail dot com. Sure. And uh, yeah, something like that. Mark. And <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, but you can find uh, you can find more stuff with me at Ethan Kane on Twitter. That's pretty much my my main main point. You can follow the show at Ritual Misery. Submit ideas on our subreddit ritualmisery.reddit.com. You can email us podcast at ritualmisery.com. Real quick, I want to give a shout out to Sergeant Muffin for hooking us up as far as helping me with the hosting and getting the DNS changes and all that other stuff when our Go GoDaddy contract expired, uh, making sure that we didn't lose service and and uh, reminded me of a few things that I knew about 15 years ago but hadn't touched since. So many thanks to Sergeant yep. Muffin for that. And uh, Sergeant Muffin, you're the, you're the man, dude. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're awesome. Sergeant Muffin rocks. Yeah. He's got my phone yeah. number. <laughs> 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 oh geez, and uh, so you can call and leave us a voicemail at five six seven six nine TRMPC. That's five six seven six nine eight seven six seven two. Of course, we want to. Uh, you can find all these links, everything that we talked about in the show today, uh, at, at richmisery dot com. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. Uh, thank you for listening or watching. For Kent, for Alex, and for me, this has been your Ritual Misery podcast. See ya. Bye. <laughs> I totally screwed up the timing on that one. So we're just going to talk through the indie music. <laughs> That's the That's cool good. thing, right? <laughs> yeah, just, you know, talking over the music is like the new hotness. This is the thing that Diamond people do. Club oh, did I? Enjoyed this <laughs> <laughs> I talked all the way through the damn ending bumper. Like Holy shit. Yeah. yeah. What a, what a, Whatever works. What a, what a <laughs> dick.
<laughs> a disrespectful uh, jerk. I'm that I'm that dickhead that takes the joke too far. Like it's funny, like the first time, the second, a little bit, the third, fourth. Eh, it's kind of starting to stretch. I'm the guy that's like taking it to the seventh and eighth. Yeah, <laughs> that's what just He's happened. Beating that dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> beating it with his with his with his happy sack. 